Now, when he, was, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And then he says it will be as it was in the days of Noah, in the days of Sodom, people will be taken by surprise. It will come like a thief in the night, as we hear elsewhere. He will come like a thief in the night, or the kingdom will come. You see, it's very mysterious. I once had a student say to me, some of the parables imply that there's a development in the kingdom of God, but how can that be? Heaven has always been there and always will be there. Another student said once, what if the second coming has happened and we've missed it? Well, that second question is answered by Christ in the second part of what I just read to you. Don't be fooled by false Christs, false messiahs, false prophets, gurus, cult leaders saying, here's the kingdom. There are many people today claiming to be Jesus Christ, by the way. I follow this stuff, cults and bizarre quasi-religions. There's a lot of really sick stuff going on out there. And, you know, people will say, I am a Jesus Christ come again, and they will get followers and they will get people to give them money and they will get people to live in their communes and they will get people to treat them like God. And Jesus 2000 years ago has said, don't be such a fool. The coming of the son of man, the second coming will be like lightning. Sorry about that. Why doesn't it just stop when I tell it to stop? And yet, the kingdom is not noticeable in the same way. It does not come by observation. It's not the same thing as an earthly realm or a table or a chair. Where's the chair? Look here. There it is. No, look. There it is. Well, I'm sitting on it. It's not like that. You can't think of it in that fundamental way. There's something more mysterious about it. And yet, Jesus is quite aware that for millennia to come, there will be people claiming to have set up the kingdom and to be Christ himself. There will be humans who think that we can build utopia. We can build the kingdom on, on our own. As Jesus says to Pontius Pilate in the gospel, according to John, when Pilate is interrogating him, Pilate says, are you a king then? And he says, my kingdom is, is not of this earth. If my kingdom were of this earth, I should be protected and I should not have to go through this. My kingdom is not from hence in the King James translation. It's more mysterious than this. So your assignment, in addition to whatever comment or question you want to give me, meditate on this. You can't just read these and let them go. You somehow have to ponder Whichever reading strikes you the most each day, ponder it, think about it. Oh, we've also got the mention of Melchizedek. We can talk about him more in class. That's in Psalm 110. He comes up a lot, even though he's only mentioned like three or four times in the whole Bible. But concerning the kingdom, what is Jesus talking about in this passage from Luke? What do you think it means? How do you think he's correcting people from misinterpreting? the kingdom. So think about that and either tell me in chat or Moodle that is, or we can talk about it in class.